Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today I am getting set up to plant my peas, sugar snap peas and shelling peas in the vegetable garden. Come with me, let's get this project done. As you can see, I figure why go boring when you can go fun? That's why I made my trellises in an S shape because I could do straight lines, but why bother with straight lines when you can make a much more stable, by the way, curved fence. It'll be pretty, it'll be whimsical, and why not? It took maybe two extra minutes over a straight fence. So that's how I set my beds up. And now let me tell you about the peas that I'm gonna be putting in. There are three types of peas that I'm gonna be planting this year. Uh, two types of shelling peas. Uh, this one is called Progress Number Nine. I believe this was a botanical interest seed. I have been soaking them for, I think actually more than a day now. I soaked them, I couldn't get them in the ground yesterday. Uh, anyway, so Progress Number Nine is a shelling pea. It grows about 18 inches tall. That's why I'm using these shorter trellises for this the shelling peas so i've never grown this one before but last year i did grow this one this is strike i got this from johnny's seeds two years ago well i i mean i got it in the fall of 22 for sowing in the spring of 23 and i sowed them last year and they were wonderful so i'm happy to have these again 
And then I have one type of sugar snap pea, and that is just plain old sugar snap is the variety name. And I got these from Johnny as well. And these will grow up to six feet tall. So the sugar snap peas will be growing on the tall trellis, while the two types of shelling peas will be grown on the shorter one. On the Johnny's website, it says that the sugar snap peas can be planted 25 seeds per foot. And that's what I did last year. I had uh, about three rows really close together, about an inch or two apart. Um, and I fit 25 pea seeds per foot in a kind of a long rectangle, three rows at a time. I don't have that many pea, uh, well, actually, I don't know how many seeds I have soaking today. I might not have enough. I've got, uh, let's see, I've got five or six feet long on my tall trellis so I could fit up to 125 150 seeds in that spacing according to Johnny's I don't know that I have that many so I'm just going to put everything I soaked onto the trellis and kind of evenly distribute them and see what we get and then on the short ones uh, the botanical interest packet for the progress number nine says to make one row two inches apart and I know from last year that I can put my peas much closer than that. So I probably am going to do two rows, one to two inches apart, all along the S shape, one on either side of the, of the fence. Now, one thing I have not got set up yet because we don't need it yet, that is the drip irrigation. I actually do have the drip on the tall trellis because it's still there from last year. Uh, but on the short trellises, I don't have drip lines going yet, but that'll be super easy to put in because I have a supply line running down the center spine of this flower bed. I'll be able to just take a quarter inch drip tube that's got emitters every six inches and, uh, and run it right along that S shape of those trellises. So now it's just a matter of putting these seeds into the ground. I'm going to um, distribute these seeds kind of evenly down the row and then poke them in the soil after. All right, well this section got a little less than the others. That's okay. Now pea seeds want to go into the ground about one inch deep. So I'm going to keep them all kind of close to the trellis. If they're too far out this way, it'll be hard for them to reach onto the trellis in their early days. So I'm just going to spread these out a little more distant from each other. And now I've been soaking these for more than a day, so they're nice and soft. I'm just going to take my finger and poke them down in, just like that. About an inch deep for each of them. Try to space them out a little bit more evenly than they are. And I just tossed them. Last year I was much more precise about my spacing, but honestly, I don't think it matters a ton. So I have some leftover that wouldn't fit on the trellis that I made. So I'm gonna bring them down here, put them in these containers here. I had cucumbers in here last year, but I think I'll try peas in here this spring and see what happens. I should, uh, I should really amend the soil first and do the fertilizer. But at this point, I just wanna get this job done. So I'll do the fertilizer at the top application in just a minute. Make 
can take half of them and put them in this container and the other half will go in the other one. Roughly, I'm not counting anything, obviously. Not quite sure what all these seeds are. I don't think they're cucumber seeds because I never really got cucumbers in here. Planted some. Some sort of windborne seed, I guess. I don't know what. I'm not sure this area of the garden gets enough sun for these. We're going to find out. I'm putting these peas in on April 2nd of 2024. That is a good six weeks after I put them in last year. Last year I put them on Valentine's Day, February 14th. And in my area, that is the guidance from uh, the state extension office and so forth. Peas can really take cold weather. So I'm a little bit late here because we've been having a, a warm up generally. Although today it's a bit nippy, it's 47 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, rainy day is dripping on me a little bit, so it's pretty chilly. Um, so it feels like the right weather to be putting peas in. But I'm just hopeful that these will have a chance to grow and set fruit and uh, be harvested before the heat of the summer comes. Um, it may be too late for peas in my area. I'm not sure. We're just going to try. Um, so do you want to look and see what else is happening around the garden today on April 2nd? Let's take a quick look. In the vegetable garden, these are four red cabbages that I put in as fall plants. And they didn't ever head up. They just started to bolt when we had the warm weather in February and March. And so I cut off the top uh, flower stalk and I'm hoping that I'll be able to harvest these side leaves and maybe chop them up and saute them and maybe still eat them that way. Uh, what do you think? Is that a good plan or no? Same thing with this kale. Uh, this is, um, I forget the variety on this, sorry. Uh, but it, I planted it in the fall and uh, it uh, is really pretty. Uh, and it had been starting to bolt also, so I cut off the flower stalk of those. I have a big one, a medium one, and one, two, three small ones. Uh, they're pretty even if they didn't end up being eaten. I have tulips left over from last year. I thought I pulled them out, but apparently a few of them still are here. So we'll be having some blooms from that. Over here, uh, I've got some spinach. This also was fall sown. I have been eating this a little bit here and there. It's pretty tasty. Inside this little netting area, I just planted some carrots and some lettuce, and I put the net on it not to keep the rabbits out but to keep the birds from coming and eating my seeds and so far it's working so I'm just hoping I'll be able to get some carrots and lettuce in here I planted them in kind of um, rows on a curve down to a point down here so I'm hoping it'll look pretty even if <laughs> even if the food part of it doesn't work maybe it'll look nice speaking of looking nice or not this is arugula that I fall planted and it's clearly gone to uh, flower. It's gonna be setting seed here in a little while and I'll see if I can at this point, try to harvest some seeds. Why not, right? Because I've let it go this far. Here's a volunteer foxglove, which I'm never mad about. What else? Let's just look at the tiered gardens and see what's going on. The middle tier was designated as my cut flower tier. Uh, so you can see I've got a big clump of bachelor's buttons returning. Those are volunteers from last year's plants that dropped seed right there. I have three tulips that returned from last year. Again, I thought I got them all out, but I guess not. And then these are Camelot foxgloves that uh, bloomed last year, and now they're gonna bloom again a second year. Uh, I think that's about all that is here from the cut flower perspective. Uh, I didn't see any larkspur returning. Um, I don't know what this is. I did plant ID on it and it said that it was a 
butterfly bush. So if this is truly a butterfly bush, then that just speaks to the invasiveness of butterfly bushes. If that's a butterfly bush for real, then that means a bird brought it in, and that means that butterfly bushes are spreading invasively in our area. So really not a great plant to be planting. I guess you could plant one of the newer hybrids that are sterile, but I'm hesitant about that because of the calorie pear, Bradford pear situation. Bradford pears were sterile, self-sterile, but when they were put with other uh, cultivars of Bradford, of calorie pears, that, that's when they cross-pollinated and then went wild all over North America. So anyway, so I'll probably be digging this out no matter what it is because it doesn't fit my plan for what this garden is. Along the front edge of this tier, I've got three or four or five different kinds of strawberry plants. They're still buried under fall leaves right now. I haven't woken them up, although they are waking up on their own for the spring season. Last year, these infiltrated all the way back into the bed. So I'm gonna go through and be pretty brutal about trimming them back and getting all the runners out so that I can maintain about two feet wide border of them. I know that you have to stay on top of it if that's what you wanna do. I'm hoping to get some good berries this year. Last year was their first season in the ground and they, not very many, maybe 10 berries total. I'm hoping for better luck this year. And then in the third tier, again, I've got more strawberries just right here in this little five foot section. And you can see they're infiltrating way back into the beds everywhere. So I gotta get them under control. My candy tuft here is uh, really starting to pop. It has spread really nicely also. And then in this bed, this is my hospital bed or my nursery bed or my, I don't know where I'm gonna put it. So I'll put it in the ground here bed. So there's really not a design to it. I've got lots of iris back here. Some of these are white, some of them are yellow. Um, there is a rose, that's the Juliet rose that I ordered. It was the last opportunity to order them online from David Austin. This was two or three years ago, I think. And uh, mine struggled. I had it in a different location and the deer ate it. So then I moved it back here. It seems to be coming back, although it's only about a third of the size that it was. Uh, last year, but it does have growth on it this year. So I'm hoping that we'll get some blooms and that it'll thrive here I do plan to leave it in this location even though this is my temporary holding holding space Also in here there is the Elizabeth Ashley hydrangea that I just put in last year That probably will move this season because it stays smaller than I imagined and so That's probably too far back in to really be enjoyed very much I also have some other random things in here. These are um, sea hollies that I grew from seed last year. These are uh, Rebecca that I grew from seed last year. This is a phlox that I bought, and this is uh, pink mooly grass that I bought. I bought both of those bare root. No, not that one. That one I bought in a cup, but this one I bought bare root, and I'm trying to get it to grow, but it doesn't seem to be wanting to. Tons of weeds, of course. Um, Sedums. This one is not Autumn Joy. I don't know what it is, but it's pretty. I think this one is Autumn Joy. Uh, what else is in here? I've got some Saponaria. There's more Candy Tuft. These are Montauk Daisies. These are evergreen, and they're actually really nice. So I hope to pull these out of this bed. I've got three more over there that match it. I'm hoping to pull them out and make some sort of, uh, what do you call it, a swath or a drift of Montauk Daisies somewhere in the garden for a nice full effect. So and then around this side, uh, weeds, uh, there's Millennium Allium, or maybe those are Serendipity. I've got some denim and lace Russian sage up here. Haven't really come back to life yet. It's trying. It's pushing a few green shoots, but mostly it's still gray sticks. This is a vine. I don't know what it is. It just volunteered right here, so I gave it a trellis. Uh, I did a plant ID app on this one as well. It said it was a pea vine, but it doesn't look like peas to me. It may be the cup and saucer vine. I had cup and saucer vine growing on this trellis last year. So maybe one of the seeds from that fell and rooted here. Maybe, I don't know. So I'm gonna let this grow, see what it is, see what happens. Everything else is kind of wet, dreary, cold, damp. But things are waking up. We did the first lawn mowing of the season the other day. Um, the Chinese snowball has tons and tons of buds on it. 
So that's going to be popping here in a couple of weeks. Zephyrine Drew and Rose, I have uh, tied it to the arbor and it's starting to go up and over this year so that'll be nice and then on this side Nellie Moser is waking up and I do see buds she'll be blooming here in a little bit it's a clematis named Nellie Moser and then this bed uh, I'd like to do some rearranging in here and some further development I'd like to do some further development up this fence border as well this year you know there's never a dull moment never uh, never a, a chance to just relax and say you're done So that's what's happening here in Harmony Hills. I got the peas in the ground on April 2nd. I'm hoping they will thrive and I'll be able to harvest them before the weather gets too hot this summer. How about you? What's in your vegetable garden? Have you planted your peas out? If so, where do you live? And when do you normally do it? Are you on time this year? Are you late? Are you early? Let me know in the comment section down below what's happening in your vegetable garden. I'm not a very good vegetable gardener, so I am continuing to learn and try things. So I'd love to learn from you. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are and I hope I'll see you again real soon friends. Take care. Bye-bye.